Ciao dear hearts, and I'm going to start today the way I start every, every post um, with thanksgiving and gratitude. Thank you so much for all your subscriptions, your shares, um, thank you for um, all your thumbs up. We so appreciate it. It really helps our channel. Um, your subscriptions. Did I say subscriptions? I think I did. Um, and um, your comments. And today's post is based on a comment that I got from Sharon. And um, she goes by Nails by Sharon. And she wanted to know about ink tents. And so I said that would be a great post. So I'm going to share my techniques um, for for fine art and mixed media and combining the two together. Today I wanted to share my technique for using ink tents and for those of you who are completely unfamiliar with ink tents by Derwent, uh, Derwent is an English company and they make um, wonderful watercolor pencils and colored pencils and watercolors and they've been in business forever and so what I love about them is partly that and that they stand by their products. Uh, Derwent uh, created these ink tense pencils. Now this is a water media but it's not watercolor it's ink. That's why it says ink and it's intense. That's why there's the intense. So they're ink tense and they come in the form of pencils and blocks. And so you can do all kinds of fabulous things with these and I'm going to share that with you right now. So these pencils, this is a set of 12 by Derwent, um, I've been using for quite a while as you can see. Um, I am not sponsored by any company. I don't work for Derwent. I just love this product. And if you like this product, um, I have a link um, just in the comments section on YouTube if you just um, click more you can see all of my links and you can pick these up at um, Amazon anyway so there you have it um, I love these because you can sharpen them to a great point and then use them for very fine detailed work um, and I take them with me on my travels I usually take them out of the tin and then just put them into a baggie and they travel really well um, the ink intense blocks um, are used for creating a larger, for coloring in in a larger space. And as you can see, it comes with the plastic insert um, and they have little wells so that you can mix all the colors. So the wonderful thing about these is that you can use them um, just like paints. So you can use the, the um, pencil and paint. What did I do with my paper? Here I thought I was all together. Um, you can use the pencil and paint off the pencil as well as drawing and then coloring in. So it's pretty fun. And then with the blocks you can do the same thing. So you can simply paint right off the block or you can pull it out and you can draw with it or create a larger surface. Filling in a larger surface is what I meant. So, <laughs> And then color that in. Using your paintbrush, just fill it in. Okay, so one of the things that you want to do if you get the blocks, um, and by the way, as a professional artist, I don't think you need to have the 72 colors. If you want to spring for the 72 colors in any kind of set, go for it. But for me, um, uh, you know, as a professional artist, I just mix colors. And so uh, one of the things you might want to do when you get these is to make yourself a little color chart so that you can actually see what the true value is. Um, and this is on uh, watercolor paper. Um, of each one of the blocks and I did this with the pencils a long time ago but 
I, can't, I couldn't find it to share it with you. But anyway, um, so it gives you kind of a true value. And then if you want to make a larger one, then you can just mix the two together and then show what these two look like together and so forth and so on. And then just keep blending and blending so that you have that um, for reference for later if you like. One of the things I wanted to share with you is that if you use the pencils um, or even the blocks, I'll try to get one of these out of here, um, and you put it directly onto the, this is a watercolor, um, you're going to show the marks. The marks are going to come through even when you apply water. And that's a lovely texture for doing lots of different things. If you don't want that texture, then you simply paint off the block or you simply paint off the pencil um, so that you get a true watercolor effect. Now, the most fabulous thing about these is that they're permanent. So once they're on here, they're not coming off. Um, you can put water on it, but it's not going anywhere. It's not gonna move, it's not gonna change. And what's really great about it is that you can paint on top, on top, on top. So that means you can create layers. And what do we like in mixed media? We love our layers. Okay, so after it dries, of course, as I said before, it becomes permanent. And now you can just paint layer upon layer upon layer. So I just played with this leaf that we had. We don't have great color here in Florida on our leaves, but you can see um, it's got a really wonderful mottled look to it. And so uh, I've got this halfway done. And now what I'll do is just go back and I'll just, just uh, fill in with a darker color and create kind of a wash. And so this is wonderful because you can just keep building up the color and um, you can add a lighter color on top and just create uh, this wonderful effect. And uh, I, I absolutely love working with them. Did I tell you that I absolutely love working with them? <laughs> okay. So I made a note here to remind myself, uh, make sure that you use a water-soluble art graph pencil. Um, if you wanna use a regular pencil to draw in your leaf or whatever you're creating, that's fine, but just know that that mark will stay. Um, but the water graph will melt and um, you can even use it for shadowing and for your gray tones, which I absolutely love. Okay, now we're on to mixed media. Actually, it's all mixed media because you're creating layers. But anyway, this technique is pretty fun. And this comes with grading the sticks. So uh, let's use a green and I'm gonna share with you. So one of the things you can do is to grate the sticks and you can mix the colors if you like. We'll put some blue in here and make a really pretty blue green. Okay. Um, now, remember, it's permanent, so wear gloves. And anything that it touches, it's going to stain permanently. So just remember that when you're working with this. And then we're going to add water. Actually, I think we're just going to pour it in here. And mix it. So it's going to stain this container too. It stains everything. <laughs> But that's not bad. Um, and then you can use a cloth, which is what I did with this. And so depending on the texture of the cloth, you will get different, uh, different kinds of textures on your paper. And um, you, you can create all kinds of layered effects uh, using different colors. So now you could use a, um, a paper towel um, if you'd like, I try not to use, you know, too much paper products to throw away in the studio. Um, I just try to be as green as possible. But you can just keep building up the layers and, um, and it, it just creates this fabulous texture. I just I love the way it, it turns out. So you can do that. You can use a paper towel. You could use a tissue. Um, one of the things that I... Um, love to do with this as you 
you may remember this um, my, from my video that I made this book, uh, I dyed this using um, inks. And this is how I did it. And so I'll just show, show you that right now. So just cut off a length of it, a little bit of lace, poke it in here. You can create, you can make it as dark as you like. You can poke it in the water, make it a little bit lighter, and just keep playing with it until you get it to where you want it. Now, one of the fun things about using it with fabric is that you can just paint directly onto the fabric. Um, or you can dab the fabric into the paint, which is the way I did it here. So you can draw on the fabric. And you can create anything that you want. There you go. And you still get those lines in there. So you can create some wonderful effects and then cut these up, use them for your work, um, use it for a background in your art journals, use it as a background or on top in your, um, on your mixed media pieces, uh, create a leaf and then cut it out and put it on the background. I mean, just let your imagination go crazy and have fun with this. They're so much fun to play with. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today in the studio. I had a great time. I hope you did too. And um, we're at Chow for now. So I just want to thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.